Hey everyone, welcome back. I uh, just want to make a quick video about uh, car electrical control systems. Um, I know some of you are kind of techie nerds like I am and uh, would be interested to know what some of the control system architecture looks like. Uh, so we'll just make a quick little video talking about, I'm going to cover uh, the open car, which is the one you see here in front of us, and then I will also cover the steeple cab, the 119, as that is the newest piece of equipment out here. Um, however, this uh, open car was recently revamped to have a little bit more modern control system. So uh, anyway, let's get started. Uh, so as you know, the overhead wire out here is uh, 240 volts AC with the rail being ground and the overhead being energized at the 240 volt level with respect to that ground. Um, so uh, this, this little open car has one motor. Let's see if I can get underneath here and show that. So there you see the, uh, that is a 36 volt DC motor from uh, a golf cart or a, a little uh, industrial cart of some kind. Uh, it's, a, it's a two horsepower motor, I believe, but it is series wound. So um, with a series wound motor, you can pretty much develop as much horsepower as you have power or uh, until it burns up. So uh, that motor, you know, I use these out here because they are infinitely powerful and we're only using them at a very high power rate for a short period of time. So they last for many, many, many years. In fact, I've never had one of these motors fail. Uh, so that's promising. So uh, anyway, you can see the, uh, the, the chain there. It goes out to the axle and then there's a chain that connects to the other axle uh, right here in front of us. So how do we drive a 36 volt DC motor with 240 volts AC? Well, the answer is right here. So this is way overkill. Uh, when I redid this, I was looking for, I really only needed one transformer. And uh, I think I got these off a guy in Craigslist and he had a pair of them. And I was like, you know what? This car is so light. Uh, let's just throw the transformers on there for for extra weight who cares they were cheap enough it didn't really matter so uh, I use both of them because why not uh, so these transformers take uh, 240 volts uh, they're they're a buck boost transformer so they step uh, 240 volts uh, you can configure it down to either 16 or 32 volt output so I've got them set up for 32 volts uh, the output of those transformers goes to some bridge rectifiers which are these guys right here so each one has its own bridge and then the output of that uh, of both of those bridge rectifiers goes into this uh, very large cap bank and that is to provide a, a nice stable source of power because um, you know you've seen in the videos where the wheels are sparking or the wires sparking or whatever so we want to make sure that we can ride through those things. Uh, so those caps store that energy and also provide a, a good, um, very low impedance uh, source of power for the motor to draw from. So the output of those uh, caps then goes to a contactor, which is this little guy right here. Um, now that contactor is closed by the activation of the throttle. So in this particular car, I have uh, just this um, little joystick looking deal. It's got a lock on it and then, you know, you just move it back and forth like that, but it's got a little micro switch on it so that whenever it's first engaged, that switch closes and that, that closes this contactor. And when that contactor is closed, it puts power to this Darlington power transistor module. Now, normally I use IGBTs. I had a few of these laying around. I think this one's good for like 200 amps. And uh, 
I decided, you know what, I'll just go ahead and use it, because why not? Um, this motor is pretty small, it's not going to draw a lot of power, uh, so it was a good way to use it up. Um, so anyways, so this contactor connects the power from the, the cap bank uh, to the Darlington power module. The output of the Darlington power module goes across this uh, snubber diode. This is one of the most important parts of any uh, uh, semiconductor control device that's driving an inductive load. Uh, and then from there, this goes out to the reverser, which uh, is very crude in this car. It's, it's just a knife switch. So you can flip this up and there's forward, flip this back, there's reverse. Uh, that just um, basically swaps the polarity of the field on the motor. Uh, and then the cables go down uh, to the motor itself. This Darlington power module gets its uh, pulse width modulated waveform from this little control board uh, right here. And uh, basically what this control board does is we get a uh, variable signal out of a potentiometer on here. And that provides a variable voltage. We'll just say uh, zero to five volts. And that goes into uh, just a little IC. This is a TL-494. It's made to be used for switch mode power supplies, uh, but it works great for, for this uh, application. Um, I use those TL-494s on pretty much everything that has uh, semiconductor power control out here. And uh, basically it just takes that variable voltage signal, converts it to a uh, PWM uh, signal, and then from there, <clears throat> there's a, uh, a driver transistor on here that drives the Darlington power module. So um, this one, pretty basic, you know, manual reverser. Oh, I do have a, a little gauge panel on this one. I've got my, my line voltage and the line current and the voltage of the, the DC bus and then also the current that the motor is drawing, which on this car, it's geared pretty low. I think I have yet to see that thing break 70 amps. Like, it's all way overkill, but um, hey, it'll be reliable for like ever. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it um, for this guy. Oh, forgot to point out, this is a 15 volt power supply that just supplies power to the electronics to drive uh, you know, the throttle control and, uh, the power module here. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's hop on over and look at the steeple cab now. So here we are at the, uh, the 119 steeple cab locomotive. And, uh, this particular piece of equipment has an actual GE controller that came from a, uh, trolley car. So I'll show you, uh, it's, got, it's got all these fingers right here that are operated uh, on a cam. So when you move, you move this handle, do this. You can see the fingers moving in it. Get another, another view here. So here's the actual contacts. And this one has seven positions. So there's seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and idle. And then it's also got uh, the reverser here. All right, so the output of, uh, of those fingers goes to uh, a control board. And that control board is located under the seat in here. So this is where I put uh, all the kind of uh, small electronic stuff because it's well guarded in here. Um, it's under the cab and then it's under a seat. So keeps the keeps the moisture out, keeps the dirt out. Well, some of the dirt. Um, 
So this is the control board right here for um, the throttle and also generates the signal to drive the IGBTs um, to control the motor. So basically there's a, there's a 15 volt power supply here. Um, there's a power supply up here. This one is for the contactors, the reversing contactors uh, and such. Um, and then there's some logic relays uh, in here that I've got. And, uh, but yeah, this little control board and, and I can show you, I'll run the throttle up. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So what that does converts uh, each one of those notches to a reference voltage, which I can adjust by these little uh, potentiometers. So basically, um, each throttle position has a fixed duty cycle um, per notch. And so I can adjust that with those, uh, with those little potentiometers if I decide to. Uh, right now, it's tweaked out pretty well, works fine. Um, and then this board here is what drives the ammeter. So I've got uh, these ammeters up here that indicate current to each traction motor and those are a zero to ten volt uh, meter and my shunt is like uh, I don't know if it's a hundred millivolt uh, 200 amp or what it is but in any case it's a millivolt signal so this just takes uh, that signal converts it to uh, zero to ten uh, I've got a couple of calibration uh, pots on there to adjust. Uh, one thing I'll point out, this this particular locomotive has motor cutouts, so um, if something happens to one of the traction motors or say uh, a chain falls off or something, I can cut out the motor and then just operate uh, on the remaining motor. So it's kind of like uh, an actual locomotive in that regard. Uh, so let's look at the power circuit now I've got the got the top off of this so you can see inside <clears throat> so this is uh, <laughs> quite the contraption in here uh, so we've got an air compressor in here this is what uh, operates the the brakes of course uh, headlight power supply up there and then uh, here's here's the reversing contactors so I can operate Reverser, you can see those work. All right, so uh, kind of like the open car, we've got the same sort of uh, setup here where the 240 volts comes in to these transformers. Uh, there are three, so these three transformers take the 240 volts and step it down to 32. Um, this transformer here is what uh, steps 240 to 120 and we use that to run the auxiliary uh, power so I can run like a drill or a grinder or whatever. Uh, but anyway, these three transformers, these are each two KVA and once again, they go to some bridge rectifiers. Uh, these guys, three separate rectifiers and then the output of that goes to this cap bank. Uh, from the cap bank, goes through a contactor. Uh, this opens and closes when the throttle is in notch one or higher. And then here is our IGBT. So this uh, this car uses IGBTs. Now mind you, there is a whole nother one of these uh, in the other end of the steeple cab. So back under there is a whole exact set of all this equipment. So each motor has its own separate power supply and control system. Uh, so the IGBT here, we've got our flyback uh, snubber protection diode, uh, and then from there it goes to the reversers and out to the traction motor, which is what's on this terminal board. Uh, here's our shunt for the ammeter. So uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the control system uh, on this car. Um, you know, it, it's pretty basic, and uh, 
it, it works extremely well all these uh, like these IGBTs and stuff I bought them off eBay and uh, you know normally if you try to buy an IGBT like that which I think that one is a 300 amp uh, 600 volt module might be a 1200 volt module in any case they're they're like a couple hundred bucks and I found these on eBay for like $15 a piece so I mean you know I know it's overkill but the price is right so why not um, so uh, yeah that's uh, that's pretty much how this uh, control system works on the 119 uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything uh, be sure to leave them down below give me a like share the video and uh, we'll see you all next time